This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Hello and welcome to Pop Vouchers, a pop culture podcast by The Straits Times. My name is Jen Lee, and I'm joined by Yo Sim Jo. Hello, everyone. All right. Singapore Social, okay, it's been on Netflix and it's been the talk yes. of the town here in Singapore and some say around the world. Yes. And, you know, um, there have been a lot of comments, to say the mm-hmm. least, on social mm-hmm. media, some positive, some not so positive. Mm-hmm. So we thought, what better way than to invite someone from the show to be yes. our special guest today? Yes, so I'm going to dial you back just a little bit first. Before mm. I invite our special guest, Singapore Social is a Netflix reality TV series that chronicles the life of um, six Singaporeans as they try to... Uh, you know, navigate love and life and their careers and things mm. like that. So today we have with us okay. the most colourful member of the cast. You can see her coming from a mile away because <laughs> of her hair. She is touted as the first international burlesque performer from Singapore. It is Suki Singapore! Singapore! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. That was our most dramatic like, wow, intro Wow, that was amazing. I feel very, very honoured. <laughs> yeah, because we're actually super excited as well. Of course, Aww. Jen and I have been watching the show. Okay, mm-hmm. great. So we have lots of questions <laughs> for you. <laughs> um, and I guess the first thing we really wanted to talk about is mm. like, you know, um, the public reaction to the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, there have been a lot of comments on social media. I think Jen can, Jen can share, share with us some of those comments. Yeah, so um, I guess people are engaged, which is a good thing because I think that's what reality TV series is supposed to do. So people are, you know, commenting on... Oh, Vinny and Christina, the relationship of their relationship. People are commenting on like Suki's burlesque dancing and things mm-hmm. like that. But of course, there are also people, um, especially I think people from Singapore who say that the show isn't representative, it's very privileged, it comes from a certain social class, that their problems are very first, first world. world. Um, they find yeah. the characters not relatable. Why do they not? Why do all of them speak with an American accent? Things like that. Right. Like, yeah, or the so accents are not consistent. Um, a lot of code switching. Yada, yada, yada. Did we miss anything out? Yeah, th- th- I think that's <laughs> the main like, That's the main thing, right? Okay. So when the trailer came out, there was already doubts that it, mm. are they Singaporean because they all don't sound Singaporean. Right. And, and I think some people were also annoyed that, oh my God, another instance of Crazy Rich Asians because this like is the, not... Like the showing of Singapore <laughs> as a yeah. very yeah rich country. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay, well, personally, myself personally, um, the, the comments and the feedback has actually been really amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of my personal story. And also, I think it's important to know in our real lives, the struggles that we've been through. So, mm-hmm. of course, this is a snapshot of our lives. But, um, you know, when I decided to get into burlesque, um, it was a really difficult journey. My parents are um, quite strict and mm-hmm. didn't support me. And so everything that I've achieved was without any backing, any financial support. I literally worked from the ground up. I, my first job was actually working in a tomato factory, putting, oh, okay. um, putting tomatoes in boxes because I literally had no support. And so mm-hmm. I had to come from that to then teaching myself IT off of Google Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) to then teaching myself burlesque. So by no means has it been an easy road. It's actually been extremely difficult and painful at times to get Mm -hmm. where I I have to the point of which you can enjoy, say, the benefits and more glamorous lifestyle of the journey. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's that's kind of important to, to note. But I've definitely experienced fans taking a look at my social media, as you say now, and um, being able to see where we've come from. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so phenomenally important. And so the reaction I've had has just been um, personally absolutely incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. So you have people like direct messaging you on direct social media? Direct messaging, um, <laughs> tweeting, um, mm-hmm. r- commenting, mm-hmm. Um, really from around the world. Um, today, somebody messaged me from Switzerland. And then a crazy thing happened yeah. is... Um, I did not know this, but we've been dubbed in all different languages because it goes out to 190 oh, yeah. countries. I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had a DM from my voice in French, the girl and Brazil. So the, the voiceovers that play my voice mm-hmm. <laughs> did he sound like you? messaged me. I have no idea. They messaged <laughs> me and I was like, hey, it's been a, pr- a privilege to be your voice in France and be your wow. voice in Brazil, okay, which okay. has just been insane. So that's just... Yeah, that's been really lovely, I guess. What yeah. are some of the comments that strangers have, have, have told you personally? Mm. Um, just that 
I represent overcoming adversity and bravery. And I think something that is really important to me, which is the power of kindness. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always said that it doesn't matter um, what experiences I have externally, socially, professionally, I will always be kind. And that, I guess, has been just to have that acknowledged has been really, really powerful and important to me. So Singapore Social, it really presents this um, all of your lifestyles is very glamorous. And like you said, you've had to climb and, and get to mm. it, that certain oh, yeah. spot. And yeah. even then, it's, it's still a struggle from day to day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then that's why, you know, I guess that's why a lot of Singaporeans, especially, um, have come forth with their negative reactions and going, this is not representative of us. Like, who, I don't hang out. Who drinks wine at 2pm yeah. at Marina Bay Sands? Yeah, probably know. on a weekday. And um, yeah, we don't hang out at just Newton Hawker Centre and... Um, and uh, what do you call it, MBS. So what do you have to say to these people who, who say that, you know, um, Singapore Social is not representative of Singapore life? Um, well, it's obviously representative of some Singapore life because all of us are different and all of us live different lives. Um, I wouldn't say that it's not representative of a Singapore life. Actually, I found that, yes, that was a reaction from the trailer. But once people I've actually had people say, hey, I reacted this way from the trailer. But once I watched it, mm-hmm. I had a completely different opinion. And you guys mm-hmm. are really amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like how the trailer is, for obviously, the, it's going to be sensationalist to hook you guys right into mm-hmm. watching it. Um, but I I think after watching the show it's been a bit different um but yeah i would say that um personally uh that it is representative of certain singaporeans and i also think that it's really important to celebrate that we are a multiracial, multicultural, multi multi-accented country mm-hmm. made mm-hmm. of different races and different backgrounds different uh, travels and I'm a what I consider a third culture kid because I'm mixed race so my accent is kind of like a mishmash of both my parents so you know and and even when you go down the street I don't think there's you can say there's a Singaporean accent of course there's a Singaporean dialect but everyone is is such a melting pot and I think that's what makes us so remarkable Um, and yes this is just a snapshot it's it's not a documentary it's it's for entertainment so yeah Mm. (laughs) Mm. true that true that so i have a confession Uh like before watching the show i read all the comments first i mean the comments just came at me right you Uh can't avoid social media and i was prepared to not Not like like the show right (laughs) did you have the same experience i was prepared to hate watch it (laughs) yeah i guess i guess yes but but but, but. (laughs) you're different from me because you actually like reality tv series i do i don't so i do right (laughs) i I mean i grew up watching like you know survivor amazing race and like you know i mean i don't really keep up the kardashians Mm -hmm. and the real housewives but i do like my entertainment to be a little bit more on the relaxing side i don't want to have to think so much and what surprised me the most about this show is that i could actually i mean contrary to what a lot of people were saying online I could relate to you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I don't necessarily hang out MBS all the time. <laughs> Neither do we. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, it was for the show, I'm guessing. <laughs> well, I mean, you just see the, the cool, I guess, the most touristy, coolest parts of it. But we actually filmed over the process of four months. Mm. But of course, you can't film all of, you can't put all of four months into a condensed period and it mm-hmm. all be me brushing my hair in a toilet or rehearsing until I sweat or darning my Mm -hmm. (laughs) stockings ready for a show. Um, So yeah, the glamorous parts were obviously all included. Right, true that. But I like that apart from just the glamorous parts, you had all these confessionals and emotional moments. Thank you. Um, You crying. We'll probably get to that later. Oh gosh, okay. Which is so, (laughs) for me, that's what reality TV is about. That's the magic of reality TV. Thank you. Like it's all Mm -hmm. set up and to some extent. Yeah. But, when you are able to like break down that barrier and see the vulnerability mm. that's where the mm-hmm. beauty of it comes in oh, so I so for much. one am a fan of the show I'll say yeah. that yeah right now. yes <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah that's what I mean I think um, everyone got this like shock reaction from watching mm-hmm. the trailer um, but when you actually watch it you realise that we are just um, the same individuals maybe at different points in our lives mm-hmm. but you know we've worked so hard I myself personally have worked so hard to be where I'm at and we just go through the same issues as everyone else insecurities struggle with family career and we're mm-hmm. just a bunch of humans trying to get by like the rest of us okay so now for some questions that I think people really want to know yes um do you guys actually know one another before the show? <laughs> um, yeah, well, obviously, uh, in Singapore, we're, it's a close-knit community, so mm-hmm. you kind of see people around. Um, but we really, we got to know each other properly 
um, through the process of the show. Mm. Um, Nicole, actually, I didn't know prior to the show. um, And she actually has turned out to be one of my closest friends now I really absolutely adore her so so you guys hang out and everything we hang out yes do yoga <laughs> um she's a yoga fan I I, I do stretch class which okay. is kind of like yoga but way less chill okay. <laughs> which is why you left the yoga class <laughs> oh, you well, had actually, that moment with actually her. I really wanted to try yoga for the first time but um I'm one of those people where if I see somebody who's struggling even if I just know them or if they're a friend I can't not be there for them I have to so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of why I, I left. It's so weird because I haven't seen the show and this happened to me like at the start of the year. You're just you're describing it as yeah. if it was yesterday. I'm like trying to remember. Oh yeah, yeah. I did do that. That's I did the, do that. That's you, the big <laughs> thing, right? You haven't seen the show. No, yeah. I haven't. Why not? Are you scared? Uh, no, it's not that. Um I'm a perfectionist and I really mm. care about my work and I'm very passionate about everything I do being credible and to a certain standard just because I just have put so much into my career. I just want it to be perfect. Not that anything can be perfect, but I think if I watched it back, I would be like, oh, this I shouldn't have right. done that. Why, oh. did I, why did I say that? Oh God, look at that, I'm sweating. And <laughs> I don't know, I would have been like, oh, you look like a spoon. I don't, I don't need that. So I'm just really enjoying everyone's enjoyment. I'm, I'm liking the secondary enjoyment that I'm getting from other people enjoying it. That's, that's giving me, yeah. Wow, you have no interest in watching the show at all. Do you have any interest <laughs> in knowing how you were portrayed? Oh, well, portrayed? Yeah. well, I know who. I think the the importance about a portrayal on TV in real life is I know who I am, and uh, I'm very confident with the kind of person that I mm. am. And so, yeah, as long as people like it for entertainment, then mm-hmm. that's that's cool by me. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. okay, another one. Mm. I, I did talk to the cast uh, yesterday and they did told me that it's absolutely not scripted. Yeah. How unscripted is it? Like, do you get directions to do certain things or go certain places? or? Um. Yeah, there's a, a little prompting. I think um, for me, it was unusual because I'm a bit socially awkward. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so I don't really socialize that much. I don't really get out to socialize that much because I'm, so I'm such a work-orientated individual. Um, so going out, for example, you, you might see that I'm, I don't know whether you see this, but I'm, I'm assuming that I look like a bit of a spoon sometimes in nightlife environments because I'm a little bit awkward because I'm not really a club person. I'm more of a spoon my cat to sleep person, which <laughs> actually came across a little bit tragic there. Um, but never mind. Uh, so, yeah, so those those are things that I perhaps wouldn't do. But what I say is what, what I said, obviously. Um, but, yeah, you'll get asked maybe like, what do you think about this? And, and you'll talk. But mm-hmm. what you're saying is obviously real life. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's no there's no reading from a script whatsoever. Well, you haven't seen the show, but you've yes. lived, you actually lived through um, those scenes yeah. that we saw. Yeah. So I want to maybe take us to some of those scenes oh and my revisit gosh. them. Okay. Du-dum, I know it's du-dum, been du-dum. it's been how many months ago <laughs> since you uh, The it? start of the year, January. So it'll be a Chinese yeah. New Year period, yes, right? Yes, correct, correct. At Marina Barrage, you were there for the sustainability event. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you, I, I think Vinny and Christina confronted you mm. um, about you know questioning their relationship, right? And then you, I guess you had a lot on your mind at the time, and then you mm-hmm. kind of like left and you started crying in front of me, who came to comfort you. Yes, that. that helped. Do you remember that? How what 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 was going through your mind at that time? And what um, do you feel about that confrontation? You know, because yeah. I think you you did. Well, the inside scoop. <laughs> you did. I mean, you um, did. You actually, did. It, yeah. I mean, obviously, what you saw is a real reaction, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But it was more really, that was towards the end of the filming process. And because um, I'm quite shy in real life, believe it or not, I just sort of, I, um, my, my, the way I dress is like an extension of my art. Um, I'm mm-hmm. not naturally super confident. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I get awkward in any situations. Um, so, so that, but also because that was towards the filming process, um, we'd had a fil- camera crew fil- follow us every day, of, like almost every day, or at least a majority of the days of the week of our lives. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is a very, um, that uh, for me personally, I found that, quite a overwhelming experience because I'm used to kind of being on myself and in the grind, you know what I mean, designing mm-hmm, my costumes mm-hmm. and, and it's a very lonely life in, in, in real life, I guess, could you say? Um, and so that really belt, built, sorry, the climax of emotion. And I think that's as well where it was coming from was the exhaustion of, um, yes, of course, I was training for my show. Yes, the events 
that were in the show were part of it, you know, rehearsing and everything that I was going through. But there's another level that perhaps the viewers don't see, which is you also have these 20 film crew mm-hmm. surrounding you that mm-hmm. you're, you don't really talk to. Mm-hmm. And that fishbowl experience is so intense. So even things like a little discussion here or there with your friends or a disagreement or a fallout, the emotion that you experience is like amplified? exasperated and amplified because mm-hmm. you're inside this fishbowl. And so if you feel sad, you you tend to feel really sad just because of the all these eyes watching you. Or if you're mm-hmm. happy, you're super bouncy because of the energy and adrenaline of all these people surrounding mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I think that that was why, yeah, right. I was very emotional on top of everything else. I yes. see. So yeah. when Vinny and Christina confronted you, mm and you just left, like, what was going through your mind at that point in time? You were oh. like, I don't want to deal with this. Oh, no, I didn't leave. You felt misunderstood? Um, I didn't actually leave. I stayed for the whole event. Um, and then after the event, I just, um, I yeah, actually, yeah mm-hmm. I don't I don't know how. Um, it was cut. Um, oh, is to, it? Yeah. Oh, so okay. I guess you You're left confronted. The, um, the main foyer, maybe. That yeah, time. you were confronted, and then you were, like, at a space that you yeah, were alone. Yeah, we had to watch Paul give a speech, so. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a really easygoing person in real life, and, um, uh, Christina and Vinny, you know, we're, we're all friends in, in real life. And sometimes you just, yeah, it's just mm. the natural part of friendships, I guess. But no, no, I, I, we're, we're good now. So that's um, great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And just one last question. I'm sorry, but I uh, I just have to ask this because, you know, <laughs> um, you may not have seen the show, but yeah. you must have seen some of the comments. And I think they started, you know, turning into personal attacks uh, against you, saying that, oh, you're so... Oh. Uh, you know, by you prying into their relationship, the nature of the relationship, you're so capable. These are their words. I think it's. You know? I think people get really excited and very passionate mm-hmm. when you're on a show. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, it is just a show. So yeah, I definitely, when um, I don't, when Free Willy jumped over into freedom, I was like, <laughs> yes, oh my god, <laughs> crying. Like it's a whale that I don't mm. know that escaped out into the wild. So I think all of us watch TV. We have a tendency to get into the storyline, but um, I haven't actually. I've only received love. I still care about the cast. Um, they're my friends, and um, so I think it's really important just for even the public just to really be kind, um, because you know we're just we're just regular people, and just like I've had my moments, I'm I'm sensitive. I'm sure the other cast members as well. We're all we're all just humans. So I think you know what you see on TV. You got to know that in real life we're all friends, and so mm-hmm. we we care about each other. So yes, thank you though for <laughs> yeah. coming to my honor, but. Um, Kindness is important to everyone, no matter what, even if you feel like, um, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? I mean, Jen and I are here, like, questioning you, but the fact is, mm. if we were to be on a reality TV show, I think we'll have yeah. lots of ugly moments. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not exactly <laughs> confident that people will like us. And so. um, there are things that um, I think that were also said on the show um, by the rest of the cast about, you know, your performance or, or uh, you know, your art, things yeah. like that. Do you... Uh, were you offended and at that point in time um, there was this scene where Christina I have no idea what they, don't tell me what they said I have no idea what they said uh, this was in front of you oh, okay. so <laughs> I think y'all were having drinks uh, it was a girls night out I will say mm-hmm. that um, I'm not offended by anything anyone says and I mm-hmm. think as artists as well whether or not um, you're wh- whichever part you're saying something about somebody mm-hmm. or their art or their vocation Um, I think even if you disagree or you don't believe it or perhaps, you know, people aren't coming at it from the right angle, I think it's always important to just like hear people out because this is um, if you really believe in the self self growth, if you really believe that you want to be the best, if you really believe that this is your passion, if you can't take the good with the bad then you're in the wrong industry. Mm -hmm. And I think as artists, we need to take that on board. So no matter what anyone says, I always think this is amazing, 100% I'm here for it because I think all of us just need to take mm-hmm. the good with the bad in life in order to become better people. Right. Is, so is that how you process criticism of your art form? Because obviously it means something so much to you, right? But when someone like Christina says to you, oh, I didn't enjoy your performance, then... But burlesque isn't, mm. f- first of all, burlesque isn't for everyone. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's okay. Um, but the other thing is, art wouldn't be art if it didn't challenge people to either be comfortable Mm -hmm. or uncomfortable 
as artists and particularly an artist such as myself, I do art to push boundaries. I do art to bring something different. This podcast is available on Spotify under hashtag pop vouchers. You can also find us under Straits Times audio features as well as Google Podcasts uh, or wherever you get your podcasts from. We are also available on YouTube. Videos of our podcasts are available on YouTube and Suki's hair is really amazing. So you should try and catch this episode on YouTube as well. Now back to our show. Right, so we're talking about Singapore Social and of course our special guest is Suki Singapore. Hi! <laughs> so, uh, we've talked about Singapore Social. Mm-hmm. We want to know more about you as a person. Nice. Okay, yes. I mean, y- when you walk into the room, everyone notices your hair, <laughs> everyone notices your fashion. <laughs> um, yeah, so you are hard to miss. Let's just, you know, you're not going to blend in for no, sure. No, not, not, gr- not great at that. And, and I think... <laughs> I think people uh, who watch the show are also a bit confused about where you're from, actually. Mm. like I've had that my whole life. Yeah. Um, but yes, I'm Singaporean, um, mm. but I'm mixed race. So my father is Indian Singaporean and my mother is white British. And oh, then okay, okay. I was created. <laughs> so yeah, um, but also, you know, obviously my natural hair color is black, dark brown. And mm. the way I look with my rainbow hair um, is culturally ambiguous. But yeah, I'm really proud of of who I am, and I, I like to represent. Um, I real I like to represent biracial kids here in Singapore because I think we have such a hard time, um, and for a very long time. Actually, it's funny you should mention my fashion because that is the reason that I dress this way and I look this way. Because growing up, um, I was always too brown to be a white chick and. To kid and too um, white to be considered fully Indian and that was really difficult really really tough because wherever you went no matter be here um, growing up in Singapore or in the UK um, because I majored in the UK I went to Nottingham University of Nottingham you would always be asked where are you from Mm -hmm. and um, that can be really painful um, because you never feel like you fit in anywhere. And actually it was at university that um, I discovered vintage fashion, which was kind of, the, I suppose, the creation of Suki Singapore, um, because finally I found this, um, I suppose, scene that was irrespective mm-hmm. of race, gender, skin color. Um, it was all about the pinup look. And vintage fashion really provided that safe haven from me from questions like that because it didn't matter then. It was about this vintage pinup look. And through that, I actually heard about burlesque. And um, that's how it all began, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So take us back. How does one get started? In burlesque. <laughs> burlesque. Like, you know, it's not something that you just walking down the street and is you're like, oh, that, I'm going to yeah. sign up. Is, is, there <laughs> even, is there even a burlesque scene in Singapore? There is now. Um, Tell us. Yeah, very good question. Um, so actually, I discovered burlesque when I was in the UK because um, I, I majored there, as I say. And um, I had never heard of burlesque before because in Singapore, it's just not, as you guys know here, it's just not really, or it wasn't definitely back then, a scene. Um and so I, I, I immediately became gravitated towards it, even though I didn't know what it was. I, I've had some classical ballet training as a kid, but my parents were very keen that I pursued the sciences. Um, so it wasn't really something that I was able to develop, unfortunately, um, of which I'm now grateful for, actually, because it's made me more passionate about it. Um, but yeah, so I, I had no experience of it. But what I did care about was the 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 meaning behind it the rhetoric behind it because it wasn't about um the the performance so much as um the empowerment that you feel from the taboo of female sexuality Mm -hmm. and um i think as well being from an indian background often talking about female sexuality is an uncomfortable topic Mm -hmm. and for me just being able to really turn that around, reclaim my body and empower other women to go, hey, you know what, um, feeling sexy is, is, shouldn't be giggled at. Because even when you say the word burlesque, people are like, he, <laughs> is it like, you know, you get embarrassed and that I wanted to change the, the, the dialogue around that and go, hey, female sexuality, we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't feel that we need to dress down. We shouldn't feel that mm-hmm. we need to hide our bodies because actually there's something really intrinsically wrong about that. So long story short, I 
went onto YouTube and I searched for the word burlesque and I saw some videos and around the time I was hearing about it, a club opened down the road from where I was in the UK auditioning for burlesque artists. And so I, I marched on down to the club and said, I'm a professional burlesque artist, give me a job. And they said, start next Friday. Wow. <laughs> so to my horror, to my horror, um, cause I was working in IT, I taught myself as, as I said, um, I taught myself like programming in C sharp and Blitz 3D and Blitz. <laughs> I, I could never do that. No one like, props you. Um, yeah, I I I literally had to look off of YouTube to find out how to do burlesque, and my first show was in a self-taught, terrible manner to about 300 people in a professional theater, and I had no idea what I was doing. I really didn't, but. Even though I didn't, it felt phenomenal. I felt like this was my calling because the audience got behind me and they loved it. And the then the the momentum I got from women and girls coming up to me saying, hey, you know what, you've inspired me to have the confidence to do something different, to dye my hair, to um, pursue an art career, to pursue this or the other, to stand up to my family, not that I'm encouraging that, but you know what I mean? To have the freedom to express myself was phenomenal. Um, and then I came back to Singapore and that was a struggle. Um, to have my art form legitimized was a four year campaign which was extremely tough because whether you like it or not we do live in a patriarchal society i think the earth the world is is quite patriarchal in in many respects that gen gender inequality mm -hmm. still yeah, exists and for burlesque to be taken seriously was tough as well because 80 percent of my audience are usually actually women or couples and so the question is what is the role of a man in an art form where it's by women for women and focuses on female sexual empowerment. And sometimes that can be quite challenging. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to to build a scene with that as the the message has been difficult, but I started at the Singapore Burlesque Society and you'll see that one of my backing dancers on the show, um, Zelia, um, we, we basically started telling people about burlesque posting on we had a facebook group and uh instagram was a massive tool for us the power of social media to kind of um, break down geological and political boundaries has been incredible and we started to get more and more people here in singapore to join i think in like i can't remember how many years down the line but we had 300 members and small burlesque classes were popping up everywhere and that had gone from there being zero and actually it being a challenge to even be allowed um to hold burlesque classes in dance studios so we've gone from that to now you'll see clubs like employees only lulu's mm -hmm. lounge um you'll see marquee mm -hmm. and burlesque is now celebrated so i feel really um yeah, I feel really proud of that accomplishment. So question, and this has to do with your question about what's the role of a guy, right? <laughs> can, a, can a guy like me learn burlesque? Yes, it's actually called boylesque. Boylesque. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. So um, we actually do have um, a couple of boy members of the Singapore Burlesque Society. Um, and there are two types of boylesque that you could do. Mm -hmm. um, there's more feminine boylesque, which is more like the burlesque style, um, which is more feminine aesthetic or more macho burlesque like wrong note rusty is a famous asian boylesque performer in new york wrong and um, note rusty. yes okay. <laughs> shout out to wrong note rusty okay. and uh he performs in like tux and it's very very masculine so yeah it's not just for for women but it does mm -hmm. regardless have this strong feminist um yeah rhetoric behind it which is what i love about it Cool. And just to dial things back a little bit for people who are not familiar with burlesque, right? Maybe mm -hmm. they've only watched the movie and not really sure what it's about. Yeah. They think it's a lot about singing. But <laughs> what do you have to say to people who have that, you know, um, I guess misconception that burlesque is striptease? And in the show, Vinny calls it regal striptease. Oh, is yeah, it? That's yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So. Um, well, I think, um, but of course, there are elements of striptease within burlesque. But it's important to note that that doesn't define the art. Um However, it is a big part of it, you know, and why, I guess, and what's the difference? Well, this is all about the onus being on a woman. So when you decide to remove, say, for example, a glove, it is your prerogative how long you take to remove that glove. 
And it is your prerogative whether you decide to remove it or not. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes it so powerful. But in other forms of, I guess, um, stripping, which it might be misconceived as, you're kind of, um, the, the onus is more on the guy um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of the, it's a little more, um, yeah, it, it's, it's more like the, the, the man has the power because you know mm -hmm. he's the he's the customer and um, whereas burlesque the woman has the power and she can decide not to strip tease at all i've done routines that are beautiful ostrich fan dances um where mm -hmm. actually no garments are removed um so i think that's what's so fantastic about burlesque and there are no rules as well so i kind of have decided to make give it a more modern aesthetic because that's who I feel inside a little bit awkward and quirky mm -hmm. and I want to bring that to stage the awkward and quirkiness and the the feeling that you can do it too and um the great thing about burlesque is there are no rules so you can do a burlesque performance however however way you want to come at it really with hip hop with hip hop like what you did yes <laughs> fairies and young raja are absolutely incredible thank yeah. you that segment it. was really fun to watch oh thanks so much i'm not gonna spoil it for anyone yeah but no <laughs> yeah thanks um, thanks guys do you want to take up bless now jen i feel like you're curious I feel I like you have the strong woman yeah. energy of somebody who nail it. I, 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 uh, it's, it's a bit intimidating, I would say. It, it's, it is intimidating when you watch it. Hmm. And then you feel like it's very sexy and, or it fits a certain aesthetic that I don't think everybody immediately feels comfortable identifying themselves as sexy or yeah mm. oh gosh i don't yeah. at all i actually don't consider myself sexy in any way shape or form and i think that's why it's so powerful and exactly what you said is how i felt when i first did burlesque and that's why it changed me so much i would actually encourage anyone to try burlesque for precisely the reason that you just said mm -hmm. is we often don't feel confident and in, inside we feel like, oh gosh, no, I couldn't do that. Or that mm -hmm. would be so awkward or it's mm -hmm. very embarrassing and I'm not this sexy, naturally, mm -hmm. naturally sexy person. But really, if you think about it, it's not about becoming a burlesque performer. It's about becoming comfortable with yourself as a woman. And I think pushing yourself in an uncomfortable environment really, really strengthens you um, in terms of the self-confidence. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that perhaps every woman should give a go to. I think being uncomfortable is where you grow the most. <laughs> Quick question. Is yes. it true that because you, you, you've been in burlesque, um, you were invited to Buckingham Palace for tea. Is that true? <laughs> yes, that's correct. Tell us about it. I wow, mean, yeah. With it the was... Queen, did you meet the Queen? No, I didn't get to meet the Queen. Um, I was shown around by um, Master of the Royal Household. Um, mm -hmm. But that was really something that I'm phenomenally grateful of and really caught me off guard. I was actually in Japan at the time when I got the email um, because I <laughs> I always had this dream that if ever anything were to come from Buckingham Palace it would be like a scroll or like an owl from Hogwarts would <laughs> like deliver it um, but no it's an email um, yes it was because I had been raising awareness about burlesque especially around Asia and um, wow. that was really one of the most proudest moments of my life it's just a complete honor I had um, I, I was, did not expect it um, but I had really really worked so hard and mm -hmm. gone up against so much to fight for this that I just felt really grateful that it, it had been acknowledged on in that capacity. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sounds really amazing, but I'm going to be really shallow here. How good were the scones at Buckingham Palace? <laughs> <laughs> scones I mean, or scones? Oh my Such god! A good question. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you imagine? Actually, um, they have their own <laughs> royal bakery, um, <gasps> so everything's baked on site um, in the in the kitchen. I didn't have a scone, but I went in pretty hard on the croissants, and they were extraordinarily buttery. <laughs> and I was a I was a fan. Yes. So you pronounce it scone, scone. not scone. Okay. No, scone. It's such a controversial. This is gonna be divided. Tomato, tomato, tomato yeah. potato, potato. Apparently, the Queen avoids saying that word because she doesn't want to divide. Is that true? Yeah, she doesn't want to divide Britain. What? Oh my yeah. God! I thought they like... were divided over Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my hamster, by the way. He's oh. down there. I can show him to you later. Yes, please. I think we have one last question for you. Yes. Which is the question that when Jen and I put on social media, we're meeting Suki tomorrow. <laughs> Any questions for her? There was one question that kept popping up. Yes. How do you maintain your hair? <laughs> oh my God. Yes, I, I don't understand. There are like comments on the texture wow. of your hair on Twitter. I mean, I, I like my hair, but what? yours defies gravity. <laughs> Sometimes you have a bottle in it. 
Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's always there's like, a bowl. There's a bowl. It's a the, oh. bowl. It changes color. Um, you make it into a hat. It's a whole thing. Yeah. No, I um I have incredible people I work with that color my hair. Siobhan Taylor and um, Tanya in LA. Um, so the color maintenance is really important, but also how you wash it just with really moisturizing products. Don't mm-hmm. wash it too often because the color drains out. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think uh, try, I, I don't know, I, I try to maintain it. Just look after your hair. I think too often sometimes you can get lazy and let it bleach out to a faded color and that's a cool grungy look, but it's not for me. Mm-hmm. I prefer to be full vibrant bowy clown. Um, so it's just a case of like care looking after it. And also it's my hair is kind of an extension of my art. And so I like to always keep it looking flamboyant because I feel like that's my personality. So I put a load of love into it as well. Mm-hmm. And on the show, um, I had great guys. Um, my regular stylist, Maurice from um, Prep Lux, if ever you want to pay them a visit. Yeah. Um, capital. Capital. Yes. They sure are. Um, so I have great people as well who do my hair and Andrea Claire as well. I had a Valentine's hairdo. So all right. she did that. Shout out to all of y'all <laughs> listening. Yes. yes. <laughs> if, you want, uh, if you want the colorful Technicolor hair, you know where to go now. Yeah, you but sure sh- do. So he's the it original. It takes work, so. though. It takes work, <laughs> guys. Yeah. But how often do you color it again? Every three to four weeks. So it is <gasps> a um, it's, it's a, high maintenance. Wow. It's a whole thing. Wow. Yeah, so my hair is actually more high maintenance than myself. I think. <laughs> 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 Well, thank you so much, Suki, for spending the afternoon with us. Yes. Um, it's thank not Buckingham, so but we, you know, we hope you enjoy your tea and your water. <laughs> thank you. And your sustainable cup. Yes, and your sustainable cup. Yes, indeed. Courtesy of the streets, time. Yes. All right. So um, that was your dose of pop culture for this week, I guess. Um, yes. If you guys want to send us any feedback, you have thoughts about Singapore social, you want to say hi to Suki, but you're too shy to say hi to her. Um, write to us, all right? Yep. You can email myself at yosemjo at sph.com.sg. You can email me at jenly at sph.com.sg or you can email your feedback to podcast at sph.com.sg. Yeah, let us know what you want to hear in the next episode. Should we invite Suki back again? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> maybe. Someone else. Your thoughts, your thoughts on the show, your burning thoughts on the show. Burning thoughts and reactions. And mm-hmm. yes, um, and send us all the love that you can. All right, and tell all your friends about us. Thank you once again, Sophie, our Thank special you guest. Me. Thank you Thanks, so guys. much. Yes. Thank you so much. Until next time, she's Jen. He's Sam Joe. And we are Pop, Pop Vultures. Vultures. Thank you for listening. That was an SPH podcast by The Straits Times. Find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts or streaming on Google Home. Do feedback to us at podcast.sph.com.sg. You can also check out more podcasts on various topics at The Straits Times and The Business Times online.